Hello class. Today we will go through a few of the exercises that you'll be learning in chapter P of the textbook. First we want first thing we want to do is understand what kind of numbers we're dealing with. There are several types of numbers listed here and they either will be rational or irrational. All the numbers that we see in this class will be one of these two types. Rational numbers can be written as a fraction p over q where p and q are real numbers. Real numbers are numbers that live on the number line with zero in the middle one and negative one on each side and there's a con continuous set of numbers between each of these. These guys are called integers and the natural numbers start with one and go up to two and so on. And so for these determining whether each one is irrational or irrational well this guy is rational because it is, it is written as a fraction 3 over 1. The square root of 3 is irrational because there's no way to write it as a fraction p over q. Pi is also irrational. This has a decimal expansion that keeps repeating. 3.14159 dot 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 and it just keeps going and changing. The same type of decimal expansion happens here. This is an indication of an irrational number. One half is rational and so is negative 5,000. If it's rational, which ones are these? Are natural numbers? This is a natural number and um, this is the only natural number. The natural numbers start at 1 and go into the positive direction. This guy is not an integer, so it's not rational. And this guy is not negative, it's not positive, and, and so therefore it's not natural. So there we go. Now in question 2, we're evaluating these expressions. You can see we've got some exponents here. What do these exponents mean? Well, they mean simply this. Let's take, as an example, let's take 5 squared. What does this mean? This means you write 5 times itself twice, so you get 25. As another example, if you were to write 3 cubed, well, that's 3, which is this base, written 3 times, because that's what this base is, and so you would get 27. Now here, in part A, this negative is sitting out in front as opposed to here this negative is inside. So in part b we're taking negative 6, negative 2 and we're raising it to the 6th power. So we're taking negative 2 and we're writing it times itself 6 times. And because we have an even number of negative signs these two are going to make a positive, these two are going to make a positive, and these two are going to make positives. And then positives times each other give positives. So 2 times 2 is 4, and this gives us 4, and this gives us 4. So, so this is really the same thing as 4 cubed, and which is 64. So this guy equals 64. And over here, because this negative is sitting out in front, this is equivalent to negative of 2 to the 6. So this will be negative 64. Now 2 to the negative 6, what this negative exponent tells you is that this, is that this 2 has to go into the denominator, and then it's raised to the 6th power. So this guy is 1 over 64. So this negative tells the base to swap sides. If it's in the numerator, it has to go to the denominator and vice versa. Here we have 7, 10, uh, 7 to the 10th over 7 to, to the 12th. Here we simply have to subtract 10 minus 12. So this is equal to 7 to the negative 2. And here's the reason. Well, because this 7 to the 12th 
is equivalent um, to, and that because it's on the down uh, in the denominator, it's equivalent to seven to the negative twelve. And when you multiply like basis, you add exponents. And so if you add ten and negative two, excuse me, ten and negative twelve, you get negative two, and that's why we get negative two down here. And so this is one over seven squared, which is one over forty-nine. There we go. Moving along. When we raise a fraction to a power, we raise both the numerator to the power and the denominator to the power. But this has a negative attached to it, and this negative tells us to flip this fraction. So this is equivalent to 2 thirds squared. And then when we square the numerator, we get 4. When we square the denominator, we get 9. Moving along, part F. Notice here we have 32 to some fractional exponent, over 16 to some fractional exponent. You should notice that 32 is a power of 2, and so is 16. So we could write 32 as 2 to the 5th, and that would be raised, that's 32, so that's all being raised to the 1 5th, and, and 16, well that's a perfect square, so 16 you could also think of as being 4 squared, and since that's being raised to the 1 half, notice that the exponents are going to cancel, because when you raise a power, like 2 to the 5th, to another power, you multiply those exponents. So when we raise 2 to the 5th to the 1 5th, that's equivalent to saying that's 2 to the 1 power, because 5 times 1 5th is 1. So 5 gets multiplied by 1 5th, giving us 1, all as an, exp as a rec as an exponent of 2, and all over 4, because 2 times 1 half is 1. So this ugly looking thing actually just equals 1 half. And scientific notation, remember the decimal is lives here, and we, we want to move the decimal place over to the left a number of times until we have just one number to the left hand side. So the decimal starts here and goes 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. So this is 1 point, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And how many places did we move? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 10 to the 8th. So that's scientific notation for this number. Notice that the exponent is positive. Here the exponent we want to write in scientific notation. Shoot, not the exponent. Wait, the part B. Here the decimal needs to go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. So this will be 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5. The negative indicates that this is a small number. And the decimal place has to move to the right. Part 4, simplifying each expression. Here we want to practice expand. Part 4, simplifying these expressions. Here the idea is that you want to Part, part, part 4, we have a squared times b divided by a to the negative 1, b to the 5. a squared and b have different bases, so they cannot be combined, but this, these bases are the same. a to the negative 1 is equivalent to a in the numerator, And this b to the 5 power is equivalent to b to the negative 5 in the numerator, leaving you 1 in the denominator. Now you add exponents. a times a, a, to the, a, a times a squared is a cubed, b times b to the negative 5 is b to the negative 4, and we want to write our answer without negative exponents, and so we are a cubed over b to the 4th.
Here we have several terms all raised to the third power. Because these are all multiplied together, each must be raised to the third power. 3 to the third is 27. x squared to the third power is x to the sixth. y to the one half raised to the third power is y to the three halves. And x to the negative two raised to the third power is x to the negative six. So writing this without exponents, we have 27 on top, y to the 3 halves, and notice that we have x to the 6 and x to the negative 6. Well, if we multiply those two things together, we have to add the exponent. 6 to the negative 6 is 0, and so we get x to the 0, but anything to the 0 power is equal to 1, and so the x to the 0 we don't write, and we just leave it as 27 times y to the 3 halves. Moving down to part E. Here we have the square root of these three terms. This is equivalent to the square root of 48 times the square root of x to the fourth times the square root of y to the fifth. The square root of 48 is the same thing as the square root of 16 times the square root of 3 and the square root of 16 is 4. So this guy is simply 4 on the square root of 3. The square root of x to the 4 is x squared because when you multiply this exponent, which is 1 half times 4, you get 2. And the square root of y to the 5th, well that's the same thing as the square root of y to the 4th times the square root of y, and the square root of y to the 4th is y squared. And so this is y squared times the square root of y. We need to collect all of these terms into one answer at the end, and our answer is 4 x squared, coming from here. This is y squared times the square root of y. And moving on to part G. Here we want to raise both the numerator and the denominator to the negative 2. This is equivalent to flipping the entire fraction. When you have a fraction raised to a negative exponent, it's equivalent to the reciprocal of that fraction raised to the positive exponent. So the first thing you should do is rewrite the expression, the reciprocal of that expression, raised to the positive exponent. Now, you want to apply this 2 exponent to each term. So we won't first want to apply the square to the x squared. That's going to give us x to the 4th. Then we want to apply it to the y to the negative 1 half and that gives us y to the negative 2 over 2. That's going to simplify as y to the negative 1. We want to apply it to this 3. 3 squared is 9. Applying it to the 3 halves. 2 times 3 halves is just 3, so this is just x cubed. And y cubed raised to the 2 power is y sixth. And the, we're almost, the only thing we need to, need to finish our answer is bring this negative exponent down. That will make it a positive exponent when we move it down. And then we have to combine these into a y to the seventh. And this x cubed can go upstairs and combine with the x squared leaving us an x. So basically you want to subtract 4 minus 3 leaving you 1 as an exponent. I'll let you fill in the rest and we'll move on to the next page.